Showtime! The Adams Family has been around since the 1930s, starting with a comic strip and evolving into multiple television shows, live action movies, and the newest Adams Family animated movie. With such a kooky and creepy family, there's so much to take in, so it's natural to miss some little details along the way. Snap your fingers with us as we go deep into the Adams Family movies and discover some hidden moments, Easter eggs, and connections you may have missed. When you watch an Addams Family movie, there is nothing more iconic than the classic theme song. But many other artists have been involved with the official film soundtracks. MC Hammer rapped to the original film, and Snoop Dogg is featured in the 2019 animation. But there is one song that never made it to the Addams Family Values soundtrack, and we all missed out on the song back in 1993. The sequel was supposed to feature the original Michael Jackson song, Is It Scary? Due to Jackson's real-life drama and accusations, the filmmakers decided to cut ties with Jackson and the song was never featured in the movie or on the soundtrack. The Addams Family movie in 1991 was a fresh release and served as a cinematic origin story for the Gothic family. The film still had plenty of connections to the classic show, including the story of Fester. When Gomez talks about Fester and his disappearance, he references his bald brother going away 25 years ago. With some quick math, 25 years before the 1991 movie release was 1966, the same year the TV show got cancelled. So Gomez is basically saying that Fester skipped town right when the show ended, or it's a sly nod to the fact that the Addams Family hadn't been seen in live action for that many years. One of the more obvious Easter eggs featured in the newest Adams Family is the appearance of the red balloon. Wednesday carries the balloon in when she goes to talk to her parents, and Morticia mentions how there's usually a murderous clown attached to the other end of these. It doesn't take much to find the reference to Stephen King's It and the nod to one of the biggest movies of the year in It Chapter 2. While the balloon is a dead giveaway, the Easter egg has another clear connection as well. In The Addams Family, Finn Wolfhard plays the role of Pugsley, and he also appears in both It movies. With It, Stranger Things, The Addams Family, and the upcoming Ghostbusters sequel, Finn Wolfhard certainly has quite the resume of supernatural films. One of the things that stands out about the new Addams Family is the pet lion, Kitty. The lion may seem like a new addition to the Addams Family roster of characters, but Kitty has a pretty long legacy in the franchise. Back on the original TV show, there would be cut shots of the pet lion roaming through the mansion. While the budget for the 1991 Addams Family probably didn't have room for a trained lion, there is still a brief mention to the character. When Gomez goes down to his vaults, he opens one of the doors and exclaims, Down, Kitty! One loud roar later, and the hint is pretty clear. The Addams Family is definitely keeping that lion. What's the best way to introduce a family who loves each other but are extremely morbid and do not follow the social norms? Well, just watch the opening segment to the first Adams Family movie. A group of Christmas carolers sing their hearts out in front of the spooky house only to have the family watch on from the roof, eventually pouring a vat of hot tar onto the front steps below. To be sure the moment was not forgotten, take a look at the front steps of the home in any scene it appears in. The stains from the tar spilling incident are still present, showcasing the film's attention to detail. Long before the MCU was formed, it was rare to see some of our Marvel heroes cross over and appear in various movies. Well, maybe, just maybe, the Addams Family knew something we didn't, because at the end of the first movie, we got a little taste of some heroes in action. During the closing moments of the film, a group of trick-or-treaters approach the home. If you look closely, you can spot both the Spider-Man and Captain America costume in the same shot. Funnily enough, the Addams Family was released five years before Tom Holland was even born. As the first Addams Family went into production, one of the key casting decisions was Christopher Lloyd. The only concern with Lloyd in the part of Fester was the skinny look the actor has, while Fester was always plump in the comics and TV show. As the cast got together, makeup artists worked on prosthetics for Fester's face until they ultimately decided they didn't look right and would severely limit Lloyd's acting. If you wanted to see what the face detailing looked like on Fester's face, then the only way to see it is through a very early teaser trailer released for the movie. Just from the short clip, you can tell how awkward the makeup would have looked. The final design looks a lot more clean and helped Lloyd really dive into the role. 
In Adam's family values, Wednesday and Pugsley go through a disastrous summer as they are forced to attend summer camp with activities and people they would never want to be a part of. When the siblings get into a little trouble, they're forced into a cabin where they must consume endless movies, including Bambi and the musical Annie. As we watch, we can hear snippets from the Annie musical, and the selection of Annie may not have been so random. The 1982 version of Annie was directed by John Huston, the father of Morticia actress Angelica Huston. Despite being a family of kooks who love the macabre, the true villains in the Addams Family are the people who consider themselves the most normal, like Miss Craven. When Miss Craven is up to no good and exploring the outside of the Addams Family house, we see some vines come to life and literally drag her around as her body gets covered. For horror movie fans, the scene probably looked familiar. The vines coming to life in a nearly identical fashion also happened in the Sam Raimi classic Evil Dead 2. In both movies, the practical effects worked well and came off a little more realistic than any type of CG would have. One of the surprising highlights in both the Addams Family and Addams Family Values was the character Thing. The walking hand provided a lot of laughs, and the digital effects were pretty impressive as the actor's body was erased from all the footage. The key moment to watch for comes in the first Addams Family film. When the family is forced to move out of their home, Thing decides to drag his collection of items in a small wagon. Among the items are a large collection of gloves and numerous books on hands. We just have to wonder, how does a walking hand actually read? In Adam's Family Values, we get to see the birth of a new Adam's Family member, with the uh, odd name Pubert. The name wasn't trending back in 1991, but it did have some deep roots to the character's origins. Back when the Adam's Family TV show was getting developed, Pubert was the name given to Pugsley. The TV network censors didn't approve of the name, and Pugsley was chosen instead. So, when the time came to choose the name for the movie, the writers jumped on the chance to make Pubert a reality. And for a bonus fact, don't let the little baby mustache fool you, Pubert was actually played by a pair of twins. When the Addams Family goes on vacation, we imagine Disneyland is not at the top of their list. They probably enjoy seeing some of the weird oddities found around the world, and if Fester's trunk is any indication, he's been to quite a few of them. In the Addams Family, we see Pugsley go into Fester's trunk. Look closely at the stickers on the trunk to spot a wide array of unique stickers. Among the highlights? Three Mile Island, the Bermuda Triangle, Death Valley, and the Black Hole of Calcutta. What's the Black Hole of Calcutta exactly? A uh, prison from the 1700s where several soldiers perished due to the terribly harsh conditions. When Cousin It pulls up to the Adams Family Mansion, we see him in a small vehicle that looks like it was custom made for the movie. While it fits inside the vehicle perfectly, it wasn't due to the production sizing it just right. The vehicle it drives is known as the real-life Messerschmitt KR-175. The three-wheel vehicles had two wheels in the front and one in the rear. While Gomez and Morticia had to deal with the evil Debbie in Adam's Family Values, Wednesday and Pugsley had an arch-nemesis of their own in the form of the goody-two-shoes Amanda Buckman. Amanda's camp experiences with the Adams kids was not her first interaction with them. Back in the first movie, the actress plays the role of a Girl Scout leader who stops by Wednesday and Pugsley's lemonade stand. You can see the tension build up between the two when Amanda keeps questioning whether the lemonade includes real lemons or not. The small scene showcased the stark differences between Amanda and Wednesday, something that was really built upon in the sequel. Now, we've already touched upon how the Addams Family has a pet lion named Kitty, but the newest animated film showcases another family pet, an ink-squirting octopus. The octopus is also not another new creation for the movie and has deep ties to the history of the quirky family. The original comic strip featured an octopus pet numerous times, and the first Addams Family movie showcased an octopus design on the head of Wednesday's bed. The removal of the octopus and lion in the live-action film helped them feel a little more grounded, even though there were so many other surreal moments. For a majority of the original TV run, and through the two live-action Addams Family movies, Thing was right-handed. Anytime you saw the hand crawl, run, or wave, it was definitely a right hand. Even the gloves Thing carries in the wagon are all for a right hand. Well, the animators decided to mix things up a bit because the hand in the new Addams Family movie is left-handed. There's no clear explanation for the mix-up, but it's exciting to see the new change and how it may impact the way Thing acts and walks around. Many people point to the first Addams Family movies as a two-part franchise, but there was an actual third entry in the series. 
Adam's Family Reunion was released straight to video in 1998, featuring an almost entirely new cast. The film had several references to the other Adams Family movies, but there was one moment which paid homage to the classic horror film The Shining. In the scene, Granny chases an unsuspecting couple through their home with an axe. She uses the axe to chop a hole in the door and peer her face through before yelling out, Here's Granny! Wednesday seems to steal the show in any live-action version of The Addams Family, and the same could be said for the character in the animated film as well. With her noose-shaped pigtails and cool attitude, Wednesday gets through the typical school day with ease. Well, except for science class. Putting her experimental nature to the test, Wednesday decides to give the lab frogs some new life by doing some Dr. Frankenstein-inspired experiments. Her quotes and body movements come directly from the classic monster movie. The whole freeing frogs in a lab scene may also have been inspired by the scene in E.T. where Elliot releases all of the frogs in his own science lab thanks to his influence of his new little alien friend. After failing so bad with Debbie, at the end of the Adams Family values, we're not sure if Fester is ever going to find true love. Then Cousin It came over and introduced him to their new nanny, Dementia. With a bald head and pale skin, Dementia was essentially the female counterpart to Fester, and their romantic interests quickly grew. When Fester first gets introduced to her and hears her name, he utters the line, Dementia, what a beautiful name. The line said by Christopher Lloyd was pretty much exactly what he said in Back to the Future Part 3 when he first met up with Clara Clayton. Doc and Fester couldn't be further apart in characters, but the nod to the Back to the Future franchise was a great touch. With dancing, explosives, and a whole lot of trap doors, there are a lot of non-traditional stunts found in the Addams Family movies. Case in point, towards the end of the first movie when Fester recovers his memory and shares a bonding moment with Gomez. The two shake hands before Fester flips Gomez to the ground in a playful wrestling move. If you look at the wide shot of the stunt move, you can clearly see the stunt performer laying on the ground instead of actor Raul Julia. Back in the original Adams Family, Uncle Fester would have a trademark scene where he stuck a light bulb in his mouth and the bulb would illuminate. At the end of the first Adams Family, we see the trademark moment as Fester gains this power after getting struck by lightning. While posing for a painted portrait, he inserts the bulb into his mouth and we get to see the glowing light emit from it. The new Adams Family adventure also features the same moment, with Fester sticking the light bulb in his mouth and brightening up the room a little. Just gotta make sure no kids try this stunt at home, because it definitely won't work. After the success of the first live-action Adams Family movie, things really kicked up a notch for the sequel with a bigger budget, cast, and special effects. Adams Family Values also featured a number of cameos, including Tony Shalhoub and David Hyde Pierce, both sitcom stars when the film was released. Now, the cameo we're focused on the most? Nathan Lane. The actor and Broadway star appeared as a police sergeant who must deal with Gomez's complaints about Fester and Debbie's wedding. Years following his role in Adam's Family Values, Lane was cast as Gomez in the first ever Adam's Family musical on Broadway. While Wednesday prefers torture devices, Pugsley has a different mischievous side to him. The young boy is pretty much obsessed with removing traffic signs off the road. He not only takes stop signs, but focuses on signs for closed roads, dangerous areas, and key warnings. In the Adams Family, we see his sign-stealing ways continue when the family moves into a motel and the room is suddenly filled with more road signs, including one about the motel pool being closed. The new animated film continues this tradition, with several more signs appearing in Pugsley's bedroom at the Adams Family Mansion. Who needs alarm clocks in the Adams Family home when a living tree can literally grab you by the legs and yank you out of bed? During the wake-up scene, we hear Wednesday refer to the tree as Ichabod, a clear homage to the classic tale The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. The name of the tree also has a broader Six Degrees connection to the Adams Family as well. In Tim Burton's film Sleepy Hollow, Christina Ritchie stars as a character who is romantically involved with Ichabod Crane. Of course, Richie also played Wednesday in the live-action Adams Family movies, connecting everything full circle and giving you some fun trivia for your next epic movie night. We already saw how Adams Family Reunion featured a reference to The Shining, but Adams Family Values goes even deeper with their Stephen King references in the very last scene of the film. As Wednesday and Joel spend some time in the Adams Family graveyard, Joel decides to lay some flowers down on the grave of Debbie. 
Wednesday clearly has some plans up her sleeve as we see an intrigued look on her face just before a hand reaches out of Debbie's grave and takes a hold of Joel. Joel screams, and many of us are taken back to the closing moments of the horror movie Carrie when the same exact thing happened. The hand shot out of the ground, creating one of the biggest jump scares in movie history. The Addams Family values duplicated the moment well and provided a great way to end the movie. Wow, what a collection of movies. What moment was your favorite? Are you excited to see the animated movie? Anything good that we missed? Well, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content.